Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about is a really a, a much larger involved movement company than I realized. I think most of us are familiar with uh, movement makers like ETA and Salida and some of the others. But it turns out to be one of the major movement makers is Tudor. And it was much more involved than I realized in a lot of different companies. And also, too, one of the companies that owns part of, well, not Tudor, but Kinesi. Now, uh, they have a, uh, recently, in the last few years, they put up this big building in Le Loc. And I think it's on land that's owned by Rolex. Of course, Rolex owns Tudor. And uh, what they did that they have, uh, you, you can see there on the, on, the, on the picture, is that there are two buildings, one with the Tudor red and the other one in gray. <laughs> I don't know why they, why they said it on gray and this sort of this bright and then a, the gray. Anyway, um, Tudor has decided that they were going to have, they, they're going to build a movement making facility that they call Kinesi, which I think means movement in some language. And um, so they built that next to the, their main building. And what I found out is that not only are Tudor movements made by Kinesi, which is owned by Tudor for the most part, uh, but they make it for some others too I didn't know about. I really was a little more surprised. About two years ago, I did another video on on Tudor and some of its involvement. I think at the time they were just building uh, or getting uh, Kinesi ready. Uh, and but what I found since when we look at Kinesi is that it, it is Tudor's company, but they have parts of it owned by at least one other company. Now, um, what I did here, a couple, uh, some examples. Uh, you have a main Tudor design or Tudor movement called the Tudor MT-54. And a couple important movements that were derived from that uh, one is the Chanel Caliber 12.2, which goes on the, uh, the Chanel J12, both the men's and the women's version. The, uh, it also goes on the North, North Kane Caliber NN20-1. Uh, I think the 54 is a little smaller than their 56. Now, in the MT-56, um, Breitling's BO2 is uh, uh, a major one that uh, was made from the MT-56, the Norcane NN-20-2, uh, uh, the Tag Heuer TH-30-00, and the Fortis uh, Verk 11 and 13. So you've got, I mean... This sort of brings up another question, really, and that is, is in-house versus not in-house. And I've got a feeling that there is a difference in the quality. And so what we really should be talking about is quality movements versus not so much quality. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so this is... I think the uh, Fortis really surprised me, really, of, of all of these, because they're generally considered a, a cheaper watch with uh, a lot of quartz and stuff like that. Tag Heuer, I keep hearing that Tag Heuer is going to be making their own movements, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with using uh, the movement facilities and one like Tudor. By the way, too, Kinesi is incredibly modern. They even uh, put the movements through the METAS test, which is like the COSC. It's a chronometer testing, and they shoot them through that thing. And so when they come out of there, 
uh, if they have gone through this uh, metas uh, mechanism, they come out with a um, chronometer grade. Now, I mentioned that Kinesi was owned in part by um, Chanel. And it turns out that Chanel has their own watch manufacturer in La Chute de Fonds, uh, Switzerland. Now, they have sort of their design studio where they do all their designing in Paris. And then they use their, uh, their facility, their, basically their movement-making facility uh, in La Chute de Fonds. Um, I'm wearing one of them now. This is the uh, Chanel uh, Monture with the uh, Caliber 1. And I was surprised by the number of other calibers they have. Um, there's caliber 2, 3, 3.1, all of these other calibers. A wonderful caliber in what they call the boyfriend, a Chanel boyfriend. And uh, I, I got to tell you, you know, when, you, uh, when I look at caliber 2 and it has diamonds or something on all of the gears, I'm not too impressed by that. But boy, I tell you, caliber 3... You know, if they put that in the right style men's watch, that would be a heck of a caliber. And they have some very good caliber making talent. Uh, and the caliber one, in part, it was designed by, in part, by Romain Gauthier. And so were the, the movement parts. So I, they do, and they, as we'll see in a second, they, they own part of that. So here you have a surprise. I mean, it was like, this is a, you know, major people, you, you know, they think of Chanel, they think of Chanel number no. five. Um, so, but no, they also have incredibly, a lot of resources for making excellent watches plus excellent watchmakers. Now, when we look at Chanel's watch ownings, uh, I didn't realize they owned Bell & Ross. They own 20% of F.P. Jorn. They own what they call a friendly share of Romain Gauthier. My guess is 20%, but that's a guess. Uh, and they do own 20% of Kinesi. In other words, the people that make the watches for all of these other companies uh, is partially owned by Chanel. Now, Chanel's interest, of course, is for making the uh, watches for the J-12. Anyway, uh, I thought you might be interested in this, and I'm keeping an eye open for Chanel. That might be a, <laughs> something that's coming under the radar. Let me know what you think. This is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. Until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection.